Remember last time we did Amazing Animals? Yeah. And I asked you to go through and find the animals that you thought were the most amazing and tell me why. Do you remember that? Yeah. And some of you picked the mayfly. Does anybody, are any of the people who picked the mayfly here? Okay, and do you remember why you thought the mayfly was so amazing? It, um, it only stayed alive one day and it had to work as hard as it could for the other mayfly to do a, some of the work too. Very good, very good. I work as a literacy consultant for grades K to 12 in Vermont. I've also been working the last uh, three years or so with the standards and with the Common Core. And I come to this school roughly once a month to work with, with different teachers. What about nature? What, what is the word nature? N-A-T-U-R-E. Um, like stuff that like lives out in nature, like a leaf or like birds. Leaves and birds are part of nature. Things that are out in nature, very good. Anybody add anything to that? Chipmunks are part of nature and so are like, mayflies are part of nature. That's right, chipmunks, mayflies. And some squirrels too. And squirrels, all squirrels. What's not part of nature then? Things that are man-made. Things that are man-made. And man-made means people-made. Things that are man-made or people-made. Very good. Is the telephone part of nature? No. no. Uh, are your pet dogs part of nature? No. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, are we part of nature? No. Yes. 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 Human beings are part of nature. Good. The Wonders of Nature, the second grade text, should be done in the course of a week, five days, with second grade, it would be about 25 to 30 minutes each day. And it might go into one or two days of the, of the next week. The teacher and I chose this lesson some time ago, and she read it twice with the children. The first time reading aloud with the students following along, the second time reading it on their own. So let's go to the page that says introduction, introduction. And I'm gonna read it out loud and you follow along with me for this part. Everybody got it? The world is full of strange and interesting animals. Some animals look unusual or have special abilities. Let's look at some of these wonders of nature. Okay, the world is full of strange and interesting animals. Some animals look unusual. Underline unusual, please. Who could tell me what that word means? They don't have the same abilities as other animals. They don't have the same abilities as other animals. Good work. Take your pencil and cross out the first two letters of unusual. Cross out the first two letters of unusual. We crossed out the first two letters and what do we have? You. Usual, and what does it mean? Um, like normal things and like things that you usually see every day. And normal things you see every day, very good. So when we crossed out the un, we were left with an unusual means you don't see it every day. And usual means you do. So when you cross out the UN, it meant something different. What does un mean? When un is in a word, what does it mean? Does anybody know what does un mean? It's not something like it doesn't do that thing. Very good. It means not. Un in front of a word usually means not. Some animals look unusual or have special abilities. I'm gonna just say what those are quickly. Well, let me ask, what is an ability? What does ability mean? Ability, um, you can use like for like a game or something or like you have to do like, like, like write and. The ability to write. And good. Read. And read, right. The ability to write and read. Very good. Academic vocabulary is essential even in, in, in as early as second grade. The, in this particular piece that we did today, the words special and ability and unusual were, were integral to the meaning of the text. But none of those are domain-specific words. So let's go to the trapdoor spider on page six, please. You may notice here that some words are, are written much darker. Words which are written darker are called bold-faced. Well, we actually talked about bold last time I was here. It was one of the trickiest words. Who, who remembers what it means? Dark. Dark. And standing out. Standing out, right. It meant standing out. Like we talked about people's clothes who might have bold clothes on. My clothes are usually completely not bold. 
Everybody say, it's called bold-faced. So say, good. If an author puts a word in bold-faced print, why do you think he does, he or she does that? Why do you think they put it in bold like that? They want it to stand out so you can see it. Very good. They want it to stand out so you can see it. And they want you to pay attention to it so you know what it means. And sometimes they put it there so the teacher can tell you what it means. The second word in bold, who, who can tell me, raising your hand, what's the second word that's in bold? Silk. Silk. What animal makes silk? Um, spiders. Right, spiders make silk. Okay, I'm going to read this page out loud, and then you're going to answer some questions, so please follow along with me. Trap door spider. A trap door spider lives in a sticky underground tunnel with a hidden door made of silk and dirt. Okay, the first question I'd like you to do in a group, to talk about in a group, and to, um, under, and to look at the text for your answer. Does everybody remember what word text means? Text, who remembers what text means, T-E-X-T? -E the letters in the word. The letters and the words, very good. So underline anything in the text that is evidence for your answer. What is the door made out of? There are a number of pieces essential to the common core that you could see in this lesson. First and foremost, text evidence. As often as possible, after every question, students are looked to go in, back into the text, find the evidence for their answers. Tell me the two things about the tunnel that the text tells us. The text tells us two things about the tunnel. Find those two things in your text, underline it, and talk about it with your group to make sure you're on the same page. Well, it says it's underground, but a trapdoor spider lives in a sticky underground tunnel with a hidden door made of silk and dirt. Two things about the tunnel? Sticky. Sticky. Underground. Very good. All right, now this question's a little trickier. We know that the tunnel is underground and it's sticky. And the text showed us that, and, and a lot of you underlined it. Now, there's two ways that that helps the spider. Talk to your group about what are the two ways that that helps the spider. How does it help the spider that the tunnel is underground and that it's sticky? Because it builds in a web. Um, a person might go out and kill it while it's sleeping. Because the spider builds a web if in, it does. in the tunnel? No, if it does outside of the tunnel, it might get killed. Oh, so it goes inside because that's better than outside where it might get killed. Yeah. Very good, very good. So the, the tunnel is inside, and it, it, the, the animals that might eat the spider can't what? <coughs> they can't get it, and they might not even S-E-E -E it. Might not even see it, right? So underground, it protects the spider. But what about the other part, the sticky part? How does that help the spider? That's a more difficult question. In case the fly gets in, but the spider didn't grab it, it could get stuck on one of the walls. Very good, very good. One of the things that often comes with the Common Core is because we dig so deeply into the text, people feel, well, these are all literal questions. They're only literal questions. Well, really, when you phrase the question, when you, when you look deeply at the text and you, and you ask these kinds of questions, you'll see they're inferential as often as they're, they're literal. An example in the text was when I asked the students about the two features of the tunnel. What were the two features of the tunnel that the text described? And they had to go back into the text, look for the evidence. And the only two pieces of evidence in the, in the, about the features of the tunnel was that it was underground and that it was sticky. And then I asked, well, how does that help the, uh, how does that help the, and the animals? And the students pretty much got that, well, it was underground, so that, that would keep it away from predators or animals who might want to eat it. But that's an inference. It wasn't explicitly stated in the text. And that's an inference they figured out on their own. Let's look at the archer fish. The archer fish has two abilities, two abilities. Read the text and underline with your pencil the two abilities. I think one of them is, is definitely um, leap out of the or so water to catch the bugs. All right, who can give us one thing? Which table can give us one thing to start? They have a very good aim. They have good aim. Okay, that's one. All the way out of the water, 
to catch bugs. How do they get out of the water? They j they what do they do? They jump. Jump. They can spit water to get the insects. Right, they can spit water to get the insects. Talk to your group. Which of these abilities do you think is more special? Spit. 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 And it will, because uh, bugs don't sink. Yeah, they don't sink. They just go to the, they go to the they um, float. surface. Yeah, they float, and they, and then the archer fish just pokes its head out to just get the tiny bug. I think it's good aim because not a lot of fish can spit water and get bugs. Right. Very good. Turn to the page with the chameleon. I'd like you to underline each ability. Well, let's do, let's do one together. Well, there's one. What's the special ability in the first sentence? They change colors. They can change colors. So underline, change colors to hide. That's one. Now, I think there's four more, but I might have missed one. So find the other four things, or at least four, you can change color how they feel. You can change color. So how they feel. And now, where are the two others? I think there's oh, we one. Three. We have three. No, there's five of them. Yeah, well, I think there's oh, yeah. five, but I made a mistake last time. Maybe you'll find one I didn't find. Um. When they spot an insect they want to eat, chameleons focus both of their eyes. They actually focus. Sometimes we like go the way that we don't want to go, right? I think that's a good one. Chameleons are lizards that can change colors. They can change colors. When the air gets warmer or colder, the skin it changes, changes color. colors by how it's warm. Yeah, yeah, that's probably one. Okay, can I have everybody's attention, please? Thank you. Who wants to give a, the first one we did together? That was they can change color to hide. Who can give us the second one, number two? Catch insects with their long, with their long tongue. They catch insects with their long tongues. Very good, with their long tongues. So that's two. Who can give us a third? Who can give us a third? They even change color to show how they feel. They change color to show how they feel. That's a third. Very good. Who has another one? Chameleons can point both of their eyes in different directions at the same time to help them see all around them. They can point their eyes in different directions to see all around them. Great. Great. When the air gets warmer and colder, their skin changes color. When the air gets warmer and colder, their skin changes color. Another one? Chameleons catch insects with their long tongues, which can be twice as long as their bodies. It will be analyzed with the children probably for three or four more days after this. And the final culminating activity will, will address the question of finding an animal, and or more than one, and telling how each animal's unusual features and special abilities helped it to survive. I think we're finished. Let me, let me just tell you, you have been fabulous. It, number one, you work together, you talk together really nicely almost all the time. Number two, when I said go back and get evidence in the text, you were able to underline all the evidence, and on this chameleon one, you found five pieces of evidence and I walked around and almost everybody had them underlined and found the evidence in the text. Finding the evidence in the text is one of the things that makes people great readers. Finding evidence in the text. And you're doing a fabulous job. So I'll come back Monday and I'll see you Monday. And it's been really fun to teach you. Really fun. Thank you very much.